YouTube video refuting the pagan trinity and just going through some scriptures that hit hard and just destroy this false doctrine of the trinity. But first, I'm going to go through the main verse that Trinitarians will always run to to prove their pagan trinity. And, and for the record, I am going to be getting nasty and getting sarcastic and that kind of stuff in this video because I've, I've talked to Trinitarians, I've tried to reason with them, and they just, they're just, they just will not be corrected. So I think I find with people like that, you have to just get nasty just to wake them up. That's what I find. So I, I am going to be saying some nasty, kind of sarcastic type of things. I will be getting, you know, obviously very nasty. Uh, so if you are a Trinitarian and you are willing to listen, you are willing to just look at the verses too, uh, this nasty, this, this sarcasm I'm going to use and the nasty things I'm going to say, they're, they're not uh, towards you. They're just towards people who are like atheists who just will not be corrected no matter what you show them. So let's get right into it. First uh, John 5, 7. Here's a verse Trinitarians will always run to to prove their pagan trinity. It says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And they'll say, See, look, it proves the trinity, because it says these three persons are one. It proves three persons. Um, no, it doesn't. Okay, if you're a Trinitarian, you know what you have to actually do? Read the verse again, okay? Show me in the verse where it says these three persons are one. It doesn't say that. It just says these three are one. For there are three that bear record in heaven, these three are one. Okay, it doesn't say three persons. So, no, it does not prove your pagan trinity. Interesting. But now, I'm going to get into some verses that prove the biblical Godhead, that Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Ghost are one. They're not three persons, as the Trinitarians claim. So, uh, one thing I'm going to go to is uh, John chapter... Where's my notes? Sorry, my notes are all messed up. John chapter 5 verse 18 because why did the Jews want to stone Jesus when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees they took up stones to stone him here's why John chapter 5 verse 18 therefore the Jews sought to more to kill him because he had not only broken the Sabbath but also said that God it was his father making himself equal with God why did the Jews want to kill Jesus because Jesus made himself equal with God Funny thing is, the Trinitarians, they probably do the same thing. They'll say, oh, he's the second person. He's the, he's, he's the second person of the Trinity. You know, I guarantee you, if the Trinitarians were there back then, they would kill Jesus too. They would get mad and say, oh, you're making yourself equal with God. Oh, you know, it's ridiculous. Uh, but here's, my, my notes are all messed up. Uh, another verse I want to go to is Philippians. Because it's on the thing of Jesus being equal with God. Philippians chapter, where is it? Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 6. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, or which also, sorry, which was also in Christ Jesus. Not good at reading. Verse six: Who, being in the form of God, thought not robbery, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus is equal to God the Father. So don't give me this crap that oh he's the second person. He's equal with God. Um, and here's some verses. Again, my notes are not the best. So what does Godhead teach? The Godhead teaches that basically Jesus. God the Father and the Holy Ghost are one, not the pagan trinity, which says they're three persons. Now, what, what, what's the role of God the Father? Well, God the Father is the soul of the Godhead. Okay, and I'm going to give you some verses proving that God is in Jesus Christ as the soul. And they'll say, oh, that's heresy, that's modalism. Okay, if you're a Trinitarian, before calling me a modalist, actually open your Bible and look at the verses with me. Okay? Yeah, I told you, yeah, you know, like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't going to get sarcastic, but, you know, again, with Trinitarians, you have to just get nasty just to wake him up. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 9 to 11. Here's a passage they cannot handle. John chapter 14, verse 9 to 11. Because they said, that, oh, Jesus and the Father are two separate persons. Okay, problem there. Uh, John chapter 14, verse number 9. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you? Yet, that, sorry, yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest, not, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or believe me for the very works sake. So, the Father is in Jesus Christ. So how are they two separate persons? Now obviously the Godhead can't separate, I'm not denying that. You see that the problem with modalism is they say the Godhead can't separate. They they say that basically the Father, Son, Holy Ghost are just two different modes of one one thing or whatever. It's it, that is heretical. 
there is separation, but they are one. You know, G John ten thirty, I and my Father are one. But notice how he says, He that has seen me hath seen the Father. If you've seen Jesus, we've seen the Father. Well, compare that to Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Because Jesus says, If you've seen him, you've seen the Father. Well, Jesus or so Second Corinthians, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Uh, Jesus is the image of God, and I prove that to you. Second uh, Corinthians four, verse four. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the context is talking about, you know, preaching and everything light of the gospel, in whom the God of this world hath blinded, uh, had blinded the minds of them which believe not, kind of like the Trinitarians, Satan has blinded them, lest the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So Jesus is the image of God. You know, again, I compare that to John 14. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus is the image of God. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 15. Colossians chapter 1... And the thing about the Trinity, though, is that the Trinitarians they'll say, "Oh, we don't believe in two. We don't believe in three gods." Yes, you do. You have three persons. They're all God, but then only one God. You know, ridiculous. And they're all they're all claiming to be God, but then there's only one God. Ridiculous, nutty nonsense. Colossians chapter one, verse thirteen: Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son? Verse fourteen: In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Look at verse fifteen: Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Now again, you see me, you see in the Father. Jesus is the image of God. So don't give me this crap that He's a separate person. Ridiculous, nutty nonsense. Uh, John chapter twelve, verse forty-five. Back to this whole thing of, of you've seen him, you've seen the Father. John chapter 12, verse 45. Because we've already established that Jesus is the image of God. So let's go back to John chapter 12, verse 45. It says, I shall start at verse 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. So John 12, 44, if you believe on Jesus, you're believing on the one that sent him as well? Hmm, interesting. So they are one. Uh, look at verse 45, John 12, 45. He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. So you've seen, if you again, you've seen him, you've seen the Father. He is the image of God. Very, very interesting. Uh, to, again, my notes are not very well organized. Uh, where's the verse? Oh yeah, back to this thing of, of sorry, I, I, again, my notes are not the best. This is, uh, this, this maybe wasn't the best video, but uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Back to this thing of, again, we, we've already established that Jesus is the image of God. You've seen him, you've seen the Father. But let's get back to this whole thing of Jesus, the Father being in Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Because uh, again, the God is in Jesus Christ. I'll show you the verse. Or, or 2 Corinthians. Oops. This is not going as planned. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So yeah, I'm, I'm not perfect. 2 Corinthians 5, 19. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto them, unto us, the word of reconciliation. <laughs> to wit that God was in Christ. God is in Christ. You know? He, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. The Father is in Jesus Christ. That's how you've seen him. You've seen the Father. Because the Father is in Jesus Christ. Uh, it's really amazing. I mean, Trinitarians, they have to just deny plain scripture. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Another good proof text proving that, that Jesus is the image of God. And how, how God is in Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 1. God, who at sturdy times, or sundry times, at the divers manners, spake at the time unto the fa time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, hath appointed an heir to unto... Uh, sorry, hath, eh, not good at reading. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom... He also made the worlds. Look at verse 3. Who is who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things by his by the word of his power, when he had exp he, when he sorry, when he by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So Jesus is the express image of his person. And notice that person singular, not three persons, you know, plural. Person singular. Jesus is the express image of his person. He's the express image of, of the Father. Um, again, my notes are all messed up. That's why I'm not. This is not going as planned. Uh, I'm trying to think of, oh yeah. So, John chapter ten, verse thirty. 
get back to this thing of Jesus and the Father being one. John 10.30, I and my Father are one. Jesus and the Father are one. Very amazing. Then you go down to verse 38. But if I do, though ye believe not in me, I believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So again, we see this thing of he and the, his, him and the Father are one, and the Father is in him and he's in the Father. I mean, it's crazy. Trinitarians have to just deny plain scripture to prove their pagan trinity. Uh, those are all the verses I have in my notes. But again, we see this theme over and over again. Jesus, oh yeah, one last verse I forgot to forgot I have in my notes. John chapter 17, verse 21 and 22. This is Jesus praying to the Father, again, proving separation because the Son is, the Son is talking to the Father. But it does because the Trinitarians often run to verses where the Son is praying to the Father and saying, see, look, they're not they're not two they're two separate persons. Uh, no, it's a, it's the body speaking to the soul. You know, again, uh, Jesus is the body, the Father is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. So you you can speak to your soul. The, again, and, and it's proved separation in the Godhead. The Son is, is speaking to the Father, but it doesn't prove the pagan Trinity. John seventeen twenty one, that they may be, may be one as thou Father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one of us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 22, And the glory which thou givest me, and I given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. So they are one. You've seen him, you've seen the Father. You know, the Father's in him, I am in the Father. You know, Jesus is the express image of God. I mean, if you read these verses, how do you come to the conclusion that they're two separate persons? No, Jesus and the Father are one being. Uh, those are all the verses I have in my notes. Oh yeah, one last verse. I, I didn't have this in my notes, but one last verse I wanted to go to. Again, this this study's kind of a, this video is kind of a mess. Um, my notes are not that good, but I'm not trying to. I mean, again, my 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 goal is not to entertain you. My goal is to actually just teach doctrine and teach the Word of God. I'm not trying to entertain you. So, yeah, a good verse that that flies in the face of this whole Trinitarian stuff is Colossians two nine. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead, dwells in him. I mean, boom, that right there, that there just destroys eternity. But, you know, Trinitarians will deny and say, oh, oh, you know, it doesn't say that. And look at verse 8, like at verse 8. Be aware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of, of the world, and not after Christ. The Trinity is philosophy and vain deceit. It is the traditions of men. It is not biblical. So if you're a Trinitarian, hopefully you've made it the whole way through. Uh, you've seen these clear scriptures. Jesus is the, is the express image of God. You know, he's the image of, the, the, you know, Jesus is the image of God. You know, all this other stuff. There's another verse I forgot to mention where it talks about how God is in the face of Jesus Christ. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Verse 6. For, you know, again, I forgot to mention this earlier. This video is not really planned. It's just on the spot. Videos that are on the spot aren't that good. For God, who commanded, commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I mean, if you're a Trinitarian out there, you have to just deny plain scripture to prove that Jesus and the Father are two persons. They're not. They are one being. Je the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is the image of God. They are one. So, don't be deceived by the pagan trinity. Uh, these are and there's other verses I can go to as well, like Deuteronomy six four. You know, the Lord is one. The God, the, yeah, the Lord your God is one Lord. You know, so many verses. But these are just some of the many verses that prove that Jesus is one being with the Father. So don't be deceived by the pagan trinity. God bless you. Goodbye.